Hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. Got another project to share with you. Cool little boat, a German coastal submarine. Let's uh, pause for the intro and then we'll get into it. So what we have behind me, uh, as I mentioned, is a German coastal submarine, the Type 23. Not to be confused with the uh, much more popular German Type 21, which is a completely different beast altogether. This particular kit is based off of a very old offering by a company called 32nd Parallel, which was really one of the premier suppliers to the hobby back in the 1990s. They are unfortunately out of business and have been for well over a decade. This is the same scale, by the way, as the uh, Bronco plastic model kit, uh, which is excellent, by the way, that you can still get. So I wanna show you how this particular one was brought together, uh, give you a bit of background on where it came from, what we're doing, and most importantly, we're gonna throw it in the water. I'm gonna share with you some footage from her maiden voyage at the local pond. So, let's get started. All right, here we go. This is uh, the boat. And actually this exterior finish is basically how it was given to me. Um, it's cool enough that I really didn't think anything needed to be done with it. Uh, did a little bit of rework on the bottom just to cover up some nicks and dings. But other than that, it's, uh, it is as it came to me. Got some cool little dudes sitting up in the tower. Uh, very brave souls. They, uh, they tend to cling on when the boat submerges uh, from underneath them. This is a plastic hull and it's got a fair degree of flex to it. Uh, 30 second parallel elected to use a, a vacuum formed construction method for this kit. But it turns out uh, actually really, really well. We have a remote fob that turns the model on and off. And this is a 2.5 inch diameter sub driver that powers the entire thing. We got a forward battery compartment with the main drive battery, a forward servo for the bow planes. We've got an LED lighting output, a remote on off switch, a gas backup, emergency gas backup. And I'm gonna try and demonstrate that uh, here a little bit later. We have uh, our receiver, we've got a fail safe device. We've got three servos in the back, two of which are actually used, uh, an electronic speed controller, a brushless uh, motor, main drive motor there, um, automatic pitch controller, and this boat is also set up with a, uh, a depth cruiser as well, and this uses uh, an electric air pump for ballast. I'll kind of demonstrate all of that here shortly. Um, it was configured with this radio, but the owner is going to be installing his own radio system. So I'm gonna keep this one, uh, but he can have the receiver because I really don't wanna to have to pull it out 
of where it is right now. Um, let's show you a little bit about the cylinder. All right, uh, turn my radio on. We've got voltage, although uh, it is getting a little low. Battery is hooked up. We'll turn the unit on with the key fob. Get an audio tone. We get a visual tone. The BLM is stating that the battery is fully charged with all three green lights active. Uh, we'll try out a few of the different functions here. We've got our forward servo. We've got our rudder servo. We've got uh, override for the stern planes. That is on a pitch controller, so that automatically moves as that cylinder is twisted. Then we've got our ballast system. That's venting. You can see the linkage arm moving there. So when that moves into that position, that vent opens on the top, the air escapes. Moving it in the other direction turns on the ballast uh, pump. Now, in this particular setup, I've got it set so that the linkage arm, and you just watch it, there's a little tire valve in there, and this does not depress it because I artificially limited that through the BLM system so that, uh, or actually through the transmitter, I apologize, so that it doesn't uh, blow the emergency gas in normal operation. Now, in the case of a loss of signal, which I'll simulate here right now, I'll turn off the radio, it's going to be a delay of about four seconds and then that should depress all the way so let's see if this actually works there we go valve is depressed gas gets blown in the electric pump is going it's trying to get gas in there and then it turns itself off in theory the uh, boat is back at the surface it regains signal and poof, we now regained control of the unit. So that's the fail safe in action. Uh, only thing to do now is uh, install this cylinder in the boat, show you how everything works. All right, to gain access to the hull, there is a thumb screw in the front of the boat uh, right here. I'm gonna undo that by hand. That comes out, hull lifts up, and the entire thing slides forward and off. We've got our LED lighting lead right there. And now we've got access to the interior. We've got a couple of clear spacers, and those will be mounted in the hull after we install the watertight cylinder. So here is the interior of the boat. We can see we've got our rudder linkage. Nice deflection there. We've got our stern plane linkages, and these are all magnetically connected. There's no need to do any physical linkage connections. You'll notice that there's no lead in the keel, and the reason for that, if we look on the bottom of the boat, there's this keel underneath, and that's actually a solid metal bar. So it doesn't get any lower than that. Um, and it provides a really high degree of static stability for the boat. Got some resin bulkheads in there, an alignment pin for the cylinder, so that actually goes straight up and rests on the inside of the ballast tank. And then shooting forward here, we've got our uh, forward dive plane linkages, and again, that magnetically connects. So. All we need to do now is uh, drop the cylinder in place and uh, put our spacers in. So there's our cylinder and you'll notice that these linkages snapped right into place. I didn't even need to, to connect them, which was actually pretty cool. This is the uh, antenna tube, which also duplicates as a test uh, tube. So you just unplug the end, submerge the cylinder, blow into the end gently and look for bubbles. And that'll tell you if you have any leaks in your watertight cylinder. The smaller of these two spacers go into a series of these uh, channels in the sides of the hull.
and that maintains the right amount of separation for the sides and it also locks the cylinder down and stops it from coming out. Likewise, and I can't do this one handed unfortunately, um, this one goes in the front, um, slips down over the top and I'll show that in a moment. Uh, but what I can show you is the connection for the forward dive planes. So that's all set to go. All right, next thing we need to do is hook up our LED lights. We'll take our connection and, uh, and plug that into the watertight port in the front of the cylinder, just like that. And we can test things just like that. We've got our uh, LED lights. on both sides and the stern. That's absolutely gorgeous at night or in the dim operating conditions. Last thing we need to do is uh, simply insert the air intake into the conning tower, slips up inside, it goes up into the big brass, or sorry, the big aluminum snorkel there and that's how the ballast system gets its air. That drops down, we screw down the front, and we've got a buttoned up boat ready for the pond. All right, let's just take a, a look at some of these functions. We'll make sure that they all work here. We've got our uh, forward, that got blocked in the way there, that's no good. Uh, our forward dive planes. We've got our rudder, our stern plane override, and our throttle. Nice and smooth operation there. And uh, of course, we've got our ballast system as well, which we showed earlier. And you can check it um, if you had that main snorkel tube out, you could touch it, but you can see the intake right here in the back of that mast. So as you've seen, the boat performed absolutely beautifully and uh, flawlessly, by the way, not so much as a drip inside the water tight cylinder uh, once we got it back to shore. Superb turning radius in this boat, uh, mainly because that rudder is directly behind the propeller. Likewise, pitch control is exceptional as well for similar reasons. It had uh, extremely stable control and maintaining periscope depth uh, was as easy as just simply moving the rudder. The boat did everything else on its own. Amazingly fun to drive. It's a great size. You can tuck it under one arm, bring it to the pond, throw it in the back of your car. No need for a pickup truck or a trailer. So it's a great size boat. It is a lot of fun and uh, highly recommend it to anybody that's interested in this hobby, it makes for a pretty good starter boat. Well, there you go, everyone. Yet another RC submarine uh, finished up built by yours truly, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. I thank you for joining me as always. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. Bob at rc-sub.com is the way to get a hold of me. Uh, you can try and leave a comment here, but I don't get to them very often. A uh, lot of videos out there and a lot of comments. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, email is the best way. So check out the website, NautilusDryDocs.com. There's lots of cool stuff there. As always, appreciate you. We will catch you all next time.